yet yeah, one of the big promises of Brexit was that we would, you know, it would have it had enough of these unelected bureaucrats. And yet we've got a guy sitting in Whitehall, an unelected bureaucrat, um, dictating some rather worrying things. Uh, but we'll get to that in a, in a future video. Not only that, but this our sovereignty that our parliament, the mother of all parliaments, the parliament to end all parliaments, the home, the seat of, of parliamentary democracy, would be strengthened through leaving the European Union. And yet, and yet, over these past four years, Parliament did indeed take control of the uh, through the series of indicative votes. However, it didn't solve anything, unfortunately. No consensus was reached, which, you know, it sums up Brexit. Because you've got the hardliners on one side, the other people and the sensible people on the other side. And unfortunately, there's this constant tipping balancing act between them. And regardless, that's not going to change. Well, it probably will do with his 80 seat majority because... Johnson has shown that if you step out of line, you lose the whip. And that's just very serious consideration for a lot of these uh, Tory MPs. They don't want to lose the whip. They want to keep their jobs. But this is it. This is where we go. And of course, this takes the continuation to get more, you know, lying about what their true intentions were. Of, you know, um, making sure, um, you know, that they're happy with Parliament. Now, Johnson and, and everyone else, has, and all these Brexiteers, have shown they're not happy with Parliament, have continued to, to to silence it. And today's topic of choice from The Guardian is covers just that. title of the article is, Johnson vowed to strengthen Parliament, yet he and Cummings are silencing it. Why are the members of the UK Parliament not holding this government's feet to the fire amid multiple crises? The case for them doing so is overwhelming. In the middle of a global pandemic with the coronavirus cases rising at home again, the government has abolished England's main public health body. The examination and university entrance systems are in a real-time chaos. The economy has fallen into recession. Jobs are collapsing by the thousands daily. And oh yes, Brexit talks have still stalled. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, who can't cook and who likes to take luxury fallen holidays at someone else's expense, is supposedly out in the rain in, on a, on a midge-ridden midge, midge Scottish camping holiday with his partner and three-month-old baby. Believe that if you wish. What really matters is that Boris Johnson is simply absent without leave. So where are Britain's MPs? And... Where are they and why are they needed? The controversial explanation is that it's simply the long, uh, the long usual summer recess. Parliament almost never sits between July and early September. MPs have only met twice in August in the last half century. The last time over Syria and in 2013. They can be recalled only if the ministers want it. And ministers rarely do. End of story. Except this is not the end. Instead, the extremely deliberate marginalisation of Parliament under Johnson and Dominic Cummings is emerging in plain sight. The COVID-19 pandemic conceals this because it's so obviously an exceptional time and because the social distance Parliament is stuck in second gear. But do not be deceived. We are witnessing the attempt of overturning of an establishment system and representative democracy that can almost be described as a quiet coup. A year ago last week, three members of Johnson's then minority government went to Balmoral and secured the Queen's authorisation to prolong Parliament. That triggered a constitutional crisis over Johnson's attempt to sideline the hung Parliament over Brexit. The crisis was eventually ended by the wrong-headed decision of opposing of opposition MPs to support an early election which Johnson won with a working majority of 87. Yet, any idea that last year's general election result might have singled a, singled a return to government through Parliament has been confounded by events. As it has turned out, the sidelining of Parliament in the, pro, in the, the prolongation crisis has continued during the COVID pandemic. Sidelining was not just a temporary expedi expedience 
brought about by the Brexit crisis and the absence of a majority. It is the continuing policy of Johnson and has taken his 2019 election victory and proceeded to refine it, not, uh, not as a parliamentary mandate, but as a presidential one. Conversations are, are there to be, conventions are there to be broken. And one of these, which has increased uh, increased before Johnson's arrival to number 10, is in the readiness of ministers, in particular Prime Minister, to subvert themselves and their policies to regular scrutiny and challenge by elected MPs. The sovereignty of Parliament in the British system is, after all, far more than a convention. It is the central pillar of the unwritten constitution. With Even with a majority of that kind that Johnson now enjoys, Parliament remains both the law and theory, the wellspring from which government decides its consent, its consent informal and as well as formal um, power to govern. Johnson is ignoring this, partly because he is not, by deed or instinct, a parliamentarian. He makes far fewer pi uh, prime, uh, prime, ministerial, oops, prime ministerial interventions than there have been and have by his recent pre uh, predecessors. He's avoided Prime Minister's questions for over a month and is now clearly uncomfortable facing Keir Starmer. He's been forced to do a session with the, with the Liaison Committee, the Common Select Committee it chairs. It went incredibly badly and he will not do another in a hurry. He does not command Parliament from the dispatch box in other way Premiers and the, with large majorities might, such as Margaret Thatcher or even Tony Blair could do. He has no instinct in his body to recall MPs over anything at all. Cummings, meanwhile, views Parliament with the same contempt. He, he reserves for all government institutions. Towards MPs as towards civil servants, he is a malign disdain, in, uh, uh, in disdain is acute to them. The two of them are never happier than when Parliament is absent and they can get on with governing in the, pref in the preferred quasi-presidential mode. Johnson's platform of choice during lockdown was the press conference rather than the Commons chamber. He was very good at that. He wasn't very good at that either, which is why he's now looking for a new press conference spokesperson. A move Thatcher's chef, Thatcher's press chief Bernard Ingram has correctly uh, uh, condemned as a constitutional outrage, which brings us back to here and now. MPs of all parties should be hopping mad. Uh, that their voices are going unheard at a time of either uh, structure uh, of, of when the entire structure of public health policy implementation in England is being scrapped by central government without the slightest consultation and the fears of 10,000s of school leaders school leavers thrown into the hazard by an unavoidable by an, by an avoidable ministerial blundering it ought to be possible for the speaker to recall parliament not just ministers uh, not just ministers, though he lacks the powers, Speaker Hoyle should be making his indignation known. Westminster should have taken a leaf from the Scottish Parliament's book and ensured that the Commons could meet once a week during recess if the Speaker chose. Scotland's better accountability is a reminder of the chief losers in this. In this. Johnson is in Downing Street because he persuaded a majority of the people of England that there had, that there had to that had been rendered powerless by the European Union. The, this, the, 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 uh, the diminishment of the British Parliament was said to embody this loss. English voters took Britain out of Europe in the same name of restoring Parliament's sovereignty. Yet, as Johnson and Cummings continue with their centralising and accountability-defying revolution in government, they are doing so at the expense of that Parliament and, above all, the people of England, whose only democratic voice it is. And I completely agree. We are in an absolute mad... It's crazy. And I've, I've actually written to my, um, my Member of Parliament... Uh, I was calling Dan Johnson then, Jan, uh, Dan Jarvis, to say he needs to push to get back into Parliament. There is just crisis after crisis, and they're not even going to meet until about maybe two weeks into September. They need to be in Parliament. They need to be holding Parliament to account, and they need to be doing it not from outside, but on the benches, 
in Westminster making their displeasure heard and making sure that they drag Johnson's feet out right onto the fire and making giving him the biggest hot foot he has ever had in his entire life. That is what MPs need to be doing right now. So I encourage you, if you are a British citizen, write to your MP and demand that they go back into Parliament and that they call for the immediate... Um, you know, cessation of the recess and that Parliament should be immediately reinstated to start addressing these crises. We cannot afford Parliament not to be there because, as it said there, Parliament is our only access to this voice. And currently, Johnson and Cummings are running it like the presidential office, that it isn't. And here's the, the, the wildest thing of all things. Many Conservatives, if you look back to the Tony Blair days, would criticise... They went after Tony Blair saying, Tony Blair doesn't want to be Prime Minister, he wants to be President. And yet here we are now with someone who is acting exactly, exactly like a President. And silence. And there shouldn't be. Which is infuriating. So, ugh. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, please do like and share these videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new and you'll see more of uh, videos talking about British politics. And if you would like to help the channel in another way, there are links below to my Patreon page as well as a one-off donation link if you'd like to support it that way instead. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.